Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, and you are watching a brand new episode of Who's That Cosplayer? And joining me today is somebody that I met at Tidewater Horror Convention, and they were cosplaying as the angel from Midnight Mass, which is one of my favorite horror TV series on Netflix, and that is Shortbread. Shortbread, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, hey, I'm really excited to interview you because it's like I was putting the slideshow together the other night and I saw all of the incredible cosplays and special effects that you've done on your page. And I was just like, yo, this is going to be a fun interview. So before we get into today's interview, everybody that's watching, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Bank. And as D always says, podcast link down below in the description, like, follow, subscribe. So Shortbread, let's go ahead and get into today's interview. So the first question that I ask each and every guest up here on Who's That Cosplayer is what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who you are. Hi, uh, um, so my name is Shortbread and I'm a local cosplayer in the Tidewater area here at the moment. And I've just been cosplaying or dressing up in some capacity for a long, long, long time, ever since I was a kid. And I'm just really enthusiastic about horror things ever since I was a child as well. So <laughs> great time to, to be here on your podcast, on your yeah. show, okay. <laughs> hey, like I said, like, I think that it's really cool that you've been doing that for a long time. And again, like your cosplays are amazing. The special effect makeup that you have on your page, they're really cool. So I want to know, how was it like when you got into your first cosplay? Like, tell everybody the experience. My first, like, real cosplay, I think, um, would be Dory from Finding Nemo. Nice. Um, I have a younger sister, and I always would pull her into joining me on my Halloween costume. And so I made this giant cardboard cutout with some straps to hold on, painted the whole thing to look like Dory, and I uh, had my mom make her uh, a dress to make her look like Nemo. And I think that was like the first like legitimate costume that I had. Everything else before that was like knockoff brand Disney princess <laughs> dresses. Nice. So uh, Disney princesses, you know, Disney is something that we talk about up here on the podcast and on Who's That Cosplayer all the time. Like, what were some of the Disney princesses that you used to be? Oh, I had a Mulan theme going on for the whole year that the movie came out. Um, I wanted to have a Mulan birthday. I was Mulan for Halloween. I had the, the armor nice. uh, made out of cardboard. And um, that was the only, like, legit Disney film outfit that I ever had. Everything else was kind of like... It's vaguely the same color as Snow White, and the twirl goes really far. So yeah, short Snow White, <laughs> but nothing, nothing legitimate. <laughs> so would you say that Mulan and Snow White, are they two of your favorite Disney princesses? Uh, yeah, I really like them um, as well as Rapunzel and Tiana. And I know we were talking a little bit earlier about Meg. She's always a, a top fame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as well. It's like Hercules, I feel like it's underrated. Like it's one of my, it's in my top five Disney movies of all time. And a lot of people, they don't talk about Hercules as much. A lot of people don't talk about Meg. And I, I feel like it's because Meg, she really isn't a Disney princess. It's like, even though in the movie, they made her seem like she was a Disney princess, but she really wasn't. I feel like they could have went one way with it, where it's just like, oh, she was a princess and, you know, she left the castle or, not castle. Uh, what did they have in in Greece? They didn't have castles. What did they have? I know. I don't Castle? know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They, uh, uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. See, now I got to look that up. So, yeah, please don't come after us because we don't know what they had. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I just think that that's awesome. And you had mentioned uh, when you were Snow White, you were Quirrell and whatnot to you know see if the dress was long and all that stuff and that's one of the cool things about like disney princesses is, is that you always have those scenes in the movies where it's just like they have the dancing and they twirl and like it just goes everywhere and whatnot and, and you know since we're talking about disney still give me your top five disney movies of all time Ooh, top five disney movies um hocus pocus uh, okay. I'm very excited for the second one coming out tomorrow. Damn. Uh, I love Hocus Pocus. Whew. 
I really like The Lion King. Uh, cry every time. <laughs> and I really like The Little Mermaid, specifically for Ursula. I always really wanted to be Ursula as a kid when I'm doing like the dream job things and be like, I want to be the sea witch. Like that is my dream job. Um, and I also really liked, what else is there? There's so many Disney movies. I know. I, and, and I just want to piggyback and say, I think it's cool that you mentioned Hocus Pocus because usually like when I say top five, people always go straight for the animated. Like nobody has ever said, <laughs> yeah, like, Hocus Pocus is one of my favorites or, uh, you know, like they never mentioned e any of the live action stuff either. So I think that that's really cool that you mentioned Hocus Pocus. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, I said I have two sisters and I really want them to dress up as the Sanderson sisters with me. Nice. I've not convinced them to cosplay at all yet, but it is slowly over the years, I will break them down. <laughs> okay, I mean, Hey, it's like, it's going to be awesome because I know stuff for some people, like my tag team partner, Diamond Victor Griff, uh, I want him to cosplay as Bakugo because, of course, you know me, I'm cosplaying as Deku all the time and whatnot. And I was just like, bro, like, you should be Bakugo. Like, you're perfect for Bakugo. And he's just like, you're not getting me in a costume. I'm just like, uh. <laughs> doesn't want to have fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. Did you name your other two Disney movies or... Uh, I did not. I took a not. pause to think and then uh, Mulan. Love Mulan. Oh. Uh, that was always a big fame growing up. And I yeah, have one more. Uh, I'm going to say just because I can't think of anything else and the only movie I can think of for some reason is 101 Dalmatians. That would never ever be on my list any other time, but I'm going to go with it. Okay. All right. So, you know, to piggyback off of something that you had said um, when you had mentioned Ursula, have you ever cosplayed as Ursula before? No, mm. not yet. Okay. But I I really wanted to be here when we would get those like ads in front of like the VHS movies about like yeah. the Disney cruises and they had Ursula there. I, I told my mom and I was like, I'm going to be Ursula on the cruise. And she's like, it's an animatronic. They're not going to get rid of that. So if you can be <laughs> Ursula as a child, I was like this tiny too. And I was like, no, I don't care. I will eat as much as I need to. I want to be Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I mean. But I mean, because, you know, you're good with special effects makeup and, you know, you're good with your cosplays and whatnot. I hope to see it one day. I think that you could bring Ursula to life and that you would kill it. Now, you're going to be Ursula. Can you sing? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> uh, you, know, you know Ursula, she hit them notes, you know. <laughs> she did. She did. She has the full range there. And I, no, not even a single note. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but, uh, you know, just like I had mentioned, you know, your special effects makeup, I think that it's really cool with, you know, the stuff that you've done on your page, like, I, like Sailor Mars, she's one of my favorite Sailor Scouts. And when I saw that, I was just like, yo, that's really awesome. And then uh, when I was scrolling down some more and I had saw, you know, somebody usually when I'm cosplaying is Jotaro Fujo, my Stan Star Platinum. And I had saw that and I was just like, yo, like, that's really awesome. So, like, how did you get into doing special effects makeup? Uh, so there was actually the special effects artist that I really admired and I just been following their page for a while on Twitter. And she had done a look where she made it look like she'd gotten run over by a car and kind of like half of herself been flattened. And so I was like, I want to try and recreate that. And I spent a really long time on it, trying to like get all the tire marks down my face and, and all the, the latex and everything. And it turned out pretty okay. And I was like, okay, this is easier than I thought it was, at least like stepping my toes into it and just kind of snowballed from there where I just really wanted to get into now how the special effects happen with all like the gore movies, the slashes, and like the blood slurps out of the neck and things like that. And so it kind of just became this self-learning process. I just had a lot of fun with it and just have been doing it ever since then. Nice. And you know, I, one of my favorite special effects that you had did was it's one where it's just like you had a scythe and it pretty much cut you in half. and. And like, there's literally like nothing there. I wish that it would pop up on the screen behind me. Sometimes I usually get lucky and it pops up behind me. But like, what was the process like with doing that? 
That one took a surprisingly long time, a lot of white paint and um, just a bunch of latex going down and there it is. And just two different lines and getting the blood drips and then put a white sheet behind me, sat in front of my window to get really good natural light. And it just happened to work out where when I put the picture, I was like, oh, I cannot even see where my neck is. Like, this is perfect. I, I barely did any editing to that photo just because it happened to just align so well <laughs> with the time of day that I took that picture. And it's still one of my favorite special effects looks that I've done since. Yeah, no, it, it was really awesome. Now, the white sheet that you had mentioned, is that the same one that's right behind you? It is, yeah. That's We're awesome. My right now so it's a little messy I was like, let me put some, <laughs> something up to hide my projects <laughs> no it's fine it's fine and it's crazy because uh the last couple of interviews that we've done on the podcast it's like usually everybody uses the, uh, the blurry background because they're just like ah, oh, there's just so much crazy stuff behind me or uh one of our guests is just like i'm in my daughter's bedroom right now and there's toys everywhere so it's just like <laughs> it needs to be blurry so um to keep it on the special effects makeup Something that I thought was really unique that you had on your page was you did a different uh, special effect with the uh, alphabet for, you know, the spooky season. And I thought that that was really cool. So, like, I just want to know, like, what was the, you know, thought process in wanting to do something like that? Well, I had really wanted to do like a, a big Halloween project for a long time. And I know a lot of people do like the 31 days of Halloween cosplay. I was like, nah, I want a project where I can really um, work on my video editing skills and, and my special effects makeup and even maybe get into some like prop building as well, which I hadn't really done a whole lot of before that point. And so I was like, oh, let me do a video for every alphabet and like have a depth associated with that alphabet. And so I ended up making 26 different looks and, and centering a whole TikTok video around it. Um, ended up just blowing up unexpectedly. And I just had a lot of fun making it. And so I was like, I'm gonna need to, to make this a thing while I do it again next year. And I'm actually getting ready to start that soon, next week actually. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you do this year. Cause I always feel like when you do stuff like this, it's like the next year is gonna have to be better. It's like, but at the same time too, I feel like it can always be a difficult process because it's just like, well, how can I top what I did before? Because um, back in 2020, I had did a 31 days list of black people who survive in horror films, right? And everybody was just like, how? Like, is this even legit? Like. It, it, did you really find 31 people? And I was just like, yeah, like I watch a lot of horror movies and I was able to find 31 people. And I haven't done it since 2020, but I am doing it this year. And I'm really excited about doing it. And people are already saying, oh, well, what about LL Cool J? I'm just like, look, I already did LL Cool J. You know, it's just like, I got a new list. There's been a lot of stuff that's come out. And what's crazy too is that, you know, people wanted me to make this a yearly thing. And I'm just like, I don't think that there are that many movies where black people actually survive. So it's just like, you gotta give me some time so that way that I can space it out. So that way I can do my research and whatnot. But I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do this year. And um, I think it's gonna be a fun time. So, you know, keeping it on the topic of horror, I gotta know. You know, for some people, I asked the question, you know, what was it like going to your first con? But because like you're a horror cosplayer as well, like was your first kind of horror convention or was it like a regular anime or comic book? Who's that cosplayer? Jager. My very first convention was a horror con and I had no idea what to expect. Like I, I knew that at like anime cons and things like that, people always dress up, but I was like, who's gonna dress up for a horror con? So I just went in like normal clothes and I see all these people walking around with fantastic special effects looks and at least five different Michael Myers and <laughs> and just had a whole bunch of people having fun and I was like, oh, I need to get in on this. And so my next one, I, I dressed up and I was like, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. And now, you know, for somebody that's never been to a horror convention, like explain to them, like, what is different about this compared to like your typical anime comic book convention? Mm, I feel like uh, a big difference in the horror crime scene is that 
people are, are a little bit less judgmental about what you've got on. Um, I know that there's been some anime cons that I've been to where most people are having fun. You always get like one or two who are like, oh, that's not screen accurate. And you don't look like this character. And it's like, oh, okay, buddy, we're all just here to have fun. That's never happened to me at a horror con. Like you can make up anything and people are just so excited to, to see your costume. And they don't care if it's from anything. It's just, you're a bloody mess and, and so am I. And we're gonna <laughs> have fun together. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Um... It's just like everybody that I interview up here, they always have experiences of like hearing certain stuff at cons. And I'm just like, I wish somebody would say something to me. Like for real, like I really wish, and nobody has ever said anything to me. They probably said something about me far in the distance, but they would never say it to me in my face. Yeah, Cause I probably get kicked out of the con. But I will say at the horror conventions to piggyback off of what you were saying, like everybody's so nice there. Like I was just wearing a shirt that had a skeleton up there and everybody kept complimenting me on my shirt. And I told my friend, I was just like, bro, like that's never happened to me at like a regular con. Like, I just feel like, you know, at regular cons, everybody's just, you know, they're either with their clique or they just stay to themselves. Whereas at the horror conventions, like everybody's just there having a good time. Like they love horror movies and they love horror costumes, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. oh no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was done. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, now I want to ask you, what because you do cosplay and then you do the special effects makeup like i this is gonna be a two-part question the first one is like what are your top three favorite cosplays that you've done over the years Ooh, my top three favorite cosplays i would say um that angel has been one of them um i've only done it twice and both times i just got such lovely feedback on it and it's just made my heart really happy because i never expected anyone to even know who it was in the first place um so that was really good um my twi'lek from star wars it's um more of like an original character design where i i have like a, a hooters version of the outfit i made it hooters for like job at the hut and I feel like that always makes people laugh and it just makes me happy to, to walk around like that. And Catwoman as well. I just really like <laughs> that. Just something about that 90s Michelle Pfeiffer outfit that I just love. No, yeah, no, I 100% agree with on all of the costumes that you said. And, you know, to piggyback what you were saying about the angel, like I remember I had came upstairs and I had just finished interviewing somebody and I was like, oh, snap, it's the angel from Midnight Mass. Like that's something that, I never thought that I would see it at a con, but again, you probably wouldn't see it at a con. The only place that you would see it at is at a horror convention. And I was like, I got an interviewer and it was just, it was so fun. I'm going to attach that interview to this interview as well. But um, Midnight Mass, it's one of those shows that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. And it's like, people know about it, but it's just like either they didn't watch it or they know about it and they did watch it and they wish that more people would talk about it. And mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, like, what was your thoughts on it when they revealed what the angel was? Because I like me, it's like I was shocked. I didn't I wasn't expecting it. And uh yeah, like what were your thoughts on it? I absolutely love that the angel is like an actual monster and, and not just some pretty boy vampire. Like, I, I love True Blood and I was a Twilight fan when I was in middle school as well. Like I can't even deny that part of myself, but it's just something about having an actual monster for the first time in a very long time as a, as a vampire or angel, as an angel. <laughs> and um, it's just really refreshing and very well done, I thought with the, the visual effects and the special effects combined. Yeah, no, I agree. Like one of my favorite moments was when uh, they were all singing on the island and then when the sun was coming up and then it just went silent and I was like, yo, like that was really eerie and for the kids to be on the boat and like they were the only survivors. It, it, sorry if I'm spoiling it for y'all. Like if y'all haven't watched it, my bad, I'm sorry. Please watch <laughs> it. Even though I said what I said, I, well, we didn't give too much away, but watch it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's a really good series and it's one of those series where it's just like, can they do a sequel? Because I feel like they could. Like, what, do, what do you think? Do you think that they could do a season two or do you think that it's good just the way that it ended? I really like how it was done, but if they were to do anything, it would need to be a prequel. Mm, I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, I, get the angel when it's still in Jerusalem 
and just have it cause havoc there. I want to know why it ended up in that cave. So that's pretty. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Now, I, now you know, I said that this was going to be like a two part question. What are three of your favorite special effect uh, cosplays that you've done? Ooh, number one would be my get a Sugaru with the brain. Uh, I made that brain myself and just oh, love putting it on. Um, the halfway decapitated neck was another big favorite. And oh, I feel like there's so many. Um, in one of my um, Death by Alphabet series that I did last year, um, I just really like how Drowned came out, um, Deep for Drowned, because I'm in the actual ocean and my makeup is somehow still staying on. I'm just very proud of myself <laughs> for making it all waterproof and, and sticking on for that whole uh, process. So. Yeah, I know. Um... I'm always afraid if, uh, you know, I put a cosplay on and like do something in the water. Cause I've really, I love the Final Fantasy series and I want to cosplay as Titus from Final Fantasy X. And one of the iconic pictures is him standing in the water with the cosplay on. I'm just like, uh, do I really want to stand in the water in like a $300 costume and then <laughs> get it all smelling like sand and ocean water and whatnot. And uh, if, if it has to, it has to be done but no I, like i'm looking at uh the drown the letter for d and like yeah that's awesome and then the makeup it looks phenomenal and it like it, it looks scary it looks spooky you know what i'm saying like, I, you're, you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome so you know now i gotta ask you because we are in the spooky season i uh, what do you love to do to celebrate it Ooh, top top thing to do love going to coin mazes and like haunted trails and haunted houses things like that and it's just very you only find it this time of year and like just oh, fills me with so much joy don't really like the ones where they grab you i, I hate that one it it really triggers my my fight response and flight or flight <laughs> but um um other than that i really like watching the new horror movies that i haven't gotten to so far that year very excited for smile to come out Yes. Um, and it looks very good. Yeah, and I know. I've been smiling this entire time. I'm, I'm so I, we both been smiling. Like either one of us could be the killer right now. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, other than that, I feel like going to to Halloween parties as well. Any excuse to dress up, really. No, I feel you on that. I mean, like if if it was up to some people, it would be Halloween all year round. Because like one of my friends. If whenever you go into her house, like she keeps her Halloween decorations up all year round, and like she, it may, it may not be as many, but she has a lot of, you know, because she just loves Halloween. Yeah. But I to piggyback off of what you were saying about like you know going to the haunted attractions and whatnot, there is one here in Virginia, uh, Frightmare, where you have to actually sign a waiver so that way they can grab you and and throw you in coffins and all that stuff. Like it is insane and. I remember a couple of years ago when I had went to it, I had went in this one room and it was completely dark and I had got separated from my group. And like all of a sudden I just hear like this kid voice say, I don't want to do this anymore. And I thought that it was part of the attraction. And then he grabbed my hand and I was like, yo, like what is going on? And it was actually a really, it was a, it was a real kid. And he really didn't want to do this anymore. And him and his mom. Yeah. Was, and I was just like, they need to add that to the actual thing because like it it scared me. I was just like, oh, but um, don't go there. I mean, no, still go there. Just uh, tell them that you don't want to do the one where they grab you because it is. Right. But no, I, I love the haunted attractions here in the area. Um, there is a corn maze one out uh, at Greenbrier Farms out Chesapeake. And then you have Hunt Club Farm where it's like they have that stuff out there. And it's, it's just always fun. And I'm the type of person where it's like, I like to go and sometimes they group us with a group of kids and whatnot. And I just love seeing the little kids reactions. Cause I'm just like, why did their parents let them come here? <laughs> it's just insane. Like, they was just like, can you go in the front? Like, can you protect us? And I'll go in the front. And then like, when I see the people in the costumes, i am like, hey, they're right behind me. I'm so evil. <laughs> but, um, <Nice>. but no, <laughs> I, I gotta ask you now, um, what is, because D asked this on the podcast, what is something that, you know, spooked you or creeped you out when you were younger? And it's just like, ah, it's something that I'll never forget. 
Oh, that was one time where I haven't decided yet in retrospect, but in the moment I really thought I saw a ghost. And that was from when um, in, in one of the neighborhoods that I grew up in, there was an abandoned school. And some of the older kids kind of like ended up crowding us and kidnapping us and like getting us into the school, locked us in. There was like three or four of us all 10, nine years old, and it's pitch black, it's nighttime, we're in there for hours. Uh, all these shadows and just weird noises because it's a dilapidating building, right? And uh, it was just very, very spooky. And at one point we turn a corner and in the room there's just this giant shadowy figure and we all just lose our shit and just start <laughs> running. We ended up breaking a window to get out where I just all ran home and uh, never really spoke about it again. <laughs> oh my God. It, it sounds like something that you would see on Scooby-Doo. It's just y'all were y'all were running door to door. It's like the monster was chasing y'all. Then it's the one scene where it's just like y'all come out one door, the monster comes out of one door, then y'all run the other way. Like that's what it reminds me of. And it's crazy. I feel like every kid has a story like that where they got pushed it's something that was abandoned because i know like i had got pushed in an abandoned house that um had caught fire and like the teenagers they locked me in there and it was just like yeah there's a fire spirit inside and it's going to burn you up and i remember like i cried my heart out so that way that somebody would come and save me and oh my god nobody came and saved me though so i'm surprised i'm still alive but um anyway now i gotta ask you uh what what is uh your favorite horror movies that you love to watch during the spooky season? One thing that I do watch every year, um, these are definitely my top three, is because I always circle back to them, is even though not really a horror movie, more of a comedy, is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Love that one. Just as shorty right now. Nice. <laughs> love the movie so much. Um, Scream, the first one, it's always a good one. Gotta respect a final girl who is not like the the typical other one. She she does what she wants and she still survives. We don't really always see that. And um, the first Halloween movie as well. Yeah, it's a classic, man. It's a cl now. I mean, you're a fan of the the first Halloween. How did you feel about the Rob Zombie one? I mean, it's a, I liked it. I mean, I still it's still Michael Myers running around killing people. Like, what's not to love? The whole basis is still there, but. Just something about the original. It's just very iconic and, and yes, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, like, how did you feel about um, Halloween Three when Michael Myers wasn't the killer in the movie? Boring. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Like so, you, you thought it was boring? Wow! Like that's crazy. No. I mean, I I can understand because it's just like you know you expect. Michael Myers and it's like they go with somebody else and mm -hmm. yeah no I, I totally understand that but no but um you know now we're here at the end of the interview and the last question that I want to ask you and this isn't you know for the spooky season or anything but this is what advice would you give to anybody that wants to do cosplay do not be afraid to, to start anywhere. Like you're not gonna make a perfect one the first run. Uh, you, you might have to like compare yourself a lot to, to bigger cosplayers as well. And, and it's so hard to do, but really just focus on what you want to do. And as long as you're having fun, that's what matters. Cause you don't know how long that other person's been specializing in, in any particular type of field, whether it's wigs or, or designing their own costumes and things like that. And I feel like, Especially now, the um, cosplay community is very like fast fashion and, and you got to treat it like a hobby and just really work on yourself. Yeah, I really love that I, because it's just like, you know, sometimes people do think that they have to try to, you know, keep up with everybody. But as long as you're just, you know, going at your own pace and you're having fun and you're enjoying it, then that's all that really matters. So. Exactly. Thank you very much for joining me up here on Who's That Cosplayer. And uh, before I let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you. Yes, so my handle for everything, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, is all that fun boo. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to, to network and love to see you there for spooky season, Death by Alphabet part two, coming out soon. <laughs>
Awesome. Awesome. Hey, and y'all know where y'all can find me at Harold Benjamin Banks at, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, everybody, for watching this interview. Make sure you check out some more interviews that we have here on the channel, along with reviews and reaction videos. Check out our podcast. We have brand new episodes every Tuesday. The link is down below in the description. And then the video that episode is up here on YouTube on Friday. Like I always say, keep that pinky up. Stay safe during the spooky season. And we'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel podcast. We got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.